Halloween is also the time of year when we celebrate things that we're scared of. Now, normally, we don't like to celebrate terror, but on Halloween, it's a-okay. So, what we fear the most would probably be evil. And so, what's evil? Evil is something that has power over you, the power to destroy you, to make you suffer, to turn you into a deformity or a monster, and you have no control. So the fear of evil is the fear of losing control over what you are becoming and turning it as something that disgusts, frightens, or repels you. Okay, so let's look at our most nightmarish fears. Like the first one is zombies. So zombies are unstoppable. They, they can climb walls. They're really crazy. Zombies represent our society's fears of drug addicts. Because if you look at the way that zombies are, they always have scratch marks and bruises from needles. They're kind of always zombied out. They uncontrollably shake when they walk. And then they can also climb walls like they're high on crack. Zombies are unstoppable. They're like sponsored by Nike. <laughs> now monsters, monsters represent our fear of being unattractive. Like ugly, fat, wrinkled, hairy, having different skin tones. And <clears throat> monsters are usually all of those things. They're blue, green, purple, and they have big polka dots. So let's hear it for the monsters. Yay, dare to be different. <clears throat> then we have vampires. Vampires represent our fear of greed. So in the movie American Psycho, Christian Bale plays a Wall Street broker who sucks the blood out of the masses so that the few elite can live in gilded luxury. If you've ever read Interview with a Vampire by Anne Rice, vampires represent global capitalism, which preys on weaker, poorer communities of color. So no one likes genocide, but vampires do, they love it. <clears throat> Okay, so mummies. Mummies represent our fear of people who are obsessed with their looks. So society teaches us to fear anorexics who starve themselves to be skinny and to judge celebrities who do excessive plastic surgery. Mummies are mannequins. They pose for pictures. They don't talk. They don't really relate to others. Their eyes are empty. And we fear that level of vanity because of the deep loneliness that surrounds people who are vain. If you recall that movie Blonde, claims that Marilyn Monroe was lonely because she was vain. And the message of the movie is, don't be Marilyn, don't do it, you'll turn into a mummy. Meanwhile, every young woman in America wants to be Marilyn Monroe. <clears throat> okay, so then we have werewolves. Werewolves represent society's fear of sexual predators or rapists or men who want to steal your energy, your life force, and drain you of your free will. When's last call, 2 a.m., you're just a piece of meat. Well, do you know how many women want Hugh Jackman to treat them like a piece of meat? There's a waiting list. Witches represent society's fear of powerful women. If they're young and beautiful witches, they'll hypnotize you and put a spell on you. If they are old, they can put a spell on themselves and make themselves appear to be fair maidens. So witches pretend to love you, but don't trust a powerful woman to love you. She's just using you, probably to throw you into a cauldron so she can cook you and make another super duper magic potion. Yay! Okay, so now we have Frankenstein. Frankenstein represents our deepest fear of not being loved, especially by your own family or creator. So not being seen as lovable because you were born different. 
Now, this is the most popular trope in Western culture. The outcast is always a superhero who doesn't know it yet. Their superhero makes them feel like Frankenstein, a monster whom no one can love. And then boom, they become Batgirl, a slimy, rubbery bat who turns into a sexy bat bombshell. Okay, now another Halloween monster we have, the Grim Raper. Basically looks like a skeleton in a robe. The Grim Reaper causes you to die and then collects your soul and guides you to the afterlife. So why do we fear the Reaper? I mean, he's obviously trying to help us. But it's just like a stewardess on an airplane that's been hit by a bomb. She's just trying to help you because you're going to die now. So why are you scared of the one person assigned to help you while you are hurtling towards death? Makes no sense. It's because we fear aging and dying. So the reaper represents our fear of aging and dying. Then we have ghouls. Ghouls eat human flesh. So you can find them in graveyards because that's basically buffet. And ghouls represent our fear of unending loneliness. So eating is the exact opposite of loneliness. It's very intimate because when you eat someone else, they become part of you. Not that you eat people, but you know what you are what you eat. Then we have goblins. Goblins are mischievous. They play tricks. They cause harm. They're laughing all the time because they're jokesters. Goblins represent our fear of criminals and con artists because they're always stealing what they themselves don't possess. Like they steal your friends. They steal your joy. They steal your stuff. They steal things that are in your heart, not just in your pocket. And they represent our fear of not being relevant and not having meaning. So do you know people who are like little goblins? They can't be serious about anything. Everything's a joke to them, including themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it's, it, it's, yeah, we're talking about evil, so it's, it's getting a little, it's getting a little draining. But it's Halloween, so, so we have to be happy and excited about, about evil. <laughs> okay, so the next Halloween monster that we are taught to fear that represents our repressed fears is the Headless Horseman. And the Headless Horseman represents our fear of losing our identity, not knowing who you are and searching for it your whole life. So the Headless Horseman can't find his own head, so he'll settle for anyone else's head, it's fine. So remember when Amy Schumer, the comedian, said that the Kardashians take the face that they were born with as a light suggestion? Well, they're obviously not afraid of a full face transplant. And I don't blame them because wouldn't you rather have someone else's face than no face at all? So the irony is that the headless horseman is carrying his head under his arm. So he does have a face. He just doesn't know it. And he keeps searching for a new one. Just like the Kardashians, they have a face, they just keep searching for new ones. So now we have trolls. Trolls live in caves or they live in really rocky areas where no one can find them. And they only come out at night because if they're in the sun, they turn to stone. So that means they're always hiding. Have you ever heard of internet trolls? They hide behind their screen names, they attack you from the shadows. So trolls represent our fear of being rendered powerless, our fear of being needy. And somehow they've turned vulnerability into shame. So they throw rocks at people because they need to vent, like rock throwing is kind of like therapy, like, ah, you know? So that's, that's what trolls are. And we have swamp monster. Water represents emotions. And swamp monsters are always wallowing in their emotions. Nothing is ever dealt with. And swamp monsters represent our fear of becoming a big hot mess, a diva, a drama queen. So you think about people that you know, right? Okay, then we have ghosts. Now ghosts represent our unforgiven deeds, our unfinished business, our unresolved conflicts that we still think about that are haunting us from our past. That's what a ghost is. And then, of course, we have aliens for Halloween. Halloween's a big alien. Aliens represent our fear of the government. In reality, 
I believe, this is my opinion, I believe aliens are very highly evolved conscious beings and they're just trying to help humanity survive climate change. But for Halloween and in pop culture, aliens stun you with this powerful ray gun and they paralyze you and they beam you up on their spaceship where they, they, they perform medical experiments on you. Sounds very familiar to a uh, human experience of war. So aliens trigger our fear of a powerful force that can do whatever they want with you and your body against your will. So aliens represent our fear of political oppression. Now we have demons. Demons this is basic demon, your basic demon, fallen angel. Now, um, if you take a regular angel, you just twist it all up into an emaciated tangle and put horns on it and they shred its wings. So that's basically a demon. So demons represent our fear of falling from grace.